Hey folks, welcome back to the Portable Gamer. Welcome back to American Truck Simulator and welcome to Yuma, Arizona. Something's different. Something is different. Can't quite put my finger on it. Yeah, we're in a Kenworth truck. First time ever in a video we're going to drive a Kenworth. Now, I don't hate on Kenworth. I just happen to prefer Peterbilt. A good friend of mine drives a 389 that he's got all hot routed out. Now the other thing that's cool about this Kenworth truck is it is cab over and you do not see this anymore on American highways. These have been illegal for about, oh, I want to say about 15 years, 10 years. It's been a minute. So you will occasionally see one like parked out behind a moving and storage company all overgrown with weeds, obviously not being used, but yeah, this used to be a thing. Used to be a thing, not anymore. So uh, the other thing that's new is we are in 1.36. I will get into that. It snuck up on me. A lot of things are sneaking up on me lately. Yeah. So being in 1.36, we have a new base game trailer. We have several new ones, but we're running a new one right now. On the back there, we have the grain tank. And let me see if I can pivot around. Yeah, if I zoom out a little bit, if I bump my mouse and then I zoom out, you can maybe take a look at this from all sides. Yeah. So new stuff, always new stuff. So we will hop in right here. We will go to the cargo market. Let's see if we can find a job. So we are in Yuma. Now I came down to Yuma just for this reason. We were in Ehrenberg, which is the next town to the north. And I mean, Phoenix is 187 miles. That's our home base. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. That seems about right. Four hours to get there. Looks like the job is right in town. Yeah, we should be okay. Cool. Here we go. Time to hit the road. It is time to hit the road. Thanks, GPS. Turn left. So we've got to go, well, it says it's zero miles. That's not right. But it's close. Uh, you want to go, uh, I don't know how I feel about going no GPS. No sat nav and just trusting the voice. I don't know. All right. We'll leave it on for the moment. So yeah, 1.36, uh, what, what gives ill will? What's, what are you doing with 1.36? I didn't even know there was 1.36. I, God, oh. In, in the video last week, I was saying, uh, you know, they're out of sync. Normally they do both at once. And now for some reason, they've got 1.36 in ETS, but not in ATS. I wonder what's up with that. Well, nothing is up with that. They do have... 1.36 in ATS. I just didn't see it. It got pushed down in the feed. I've been super busy. There's been a lot going on in my world. And so it got pushed down in the feed. And when I checked the 1.36 news in ETS, I immediately hopped over to ATS. And all I saw was some Utah stuff. And I didn't scroll down. So it's entirely on me. It's my fault. I apologize. But yeah, there is 1.36. Now, I run, I think... When I was looking at my log, it said I have like 105 mods in ETS. A lot of them are small. Engine mods and light mods and accessories and things like that. And then about 10 of them, no more than that, probably 15 of them are made up of pro mods, which is like 11 pieces now, 8 pieces. That's a big mod. And the Jazzy Cat Pack. So it sounds like a lot. It sounds like a lot, a lot. Wow, it's like the 70s here today. Look at that guy. Beautiful. So we got an old truck. We got an old Chevelle going past. It's very retro. So I have a ton of mods on the ETS side. I don't have nearly as many mods. Uh, that's There's a hot dog right there. There's a hot dog walking around. That's not something you see every day. Here we go. In ATS, I have a lot less mods. Now in ETS, we're gonna start a new profile. We did start a new profile for 1.36. Just to be clean and because we've had some problems, I've had some problems off camera, as you do when you run a ton of mods. But on the ATS side, we only have, I think about 20. Really not that many mods. So I decided to carry over our profile to 1.36. And as we stop here at lights, I'm going to try to read some of this stuff to you. So we got three new trailers. We got the grain tank that we have on. There's a grain hopper, and there's also a frack tank 
which is not at the moment I do not see it in the trailer market I was not able to, to buy one it's actually the trailer that I wanted to buy but I couldn't find it anywhere so we did not buy that but there's three new trailers they have revamped a couple cities they have I believe they've added some roads and then they did all the other things that they did in 1.36 on ETS as far as uh, anti-aliasing a direct X11 uh, the avoidance pins you can put the the pins in the map for areas you want to avoid being able to see your drivers ah in fact now that I think about it find a good gear here now that I think about it in 1.36 on ETS we don't have any drivers so we couldn't see anything moving around the map but we do have drivers here so let's get down to a good gear I know I know I hear people beeping at me let's set the brake Let's get our job going and then we'll take a look at the map and see if we can see those things. Uh, Phoenix, this is the job we want. We'll take it. And where do we load up? It says right over there. Alright. So, brake is off. I know. Let's go out here. Get this cranked over so we don't hit the fence. Beautiful. So yeah, we'll load up and then we'll take a look at the map. Let's see if it makes any more sense when we have some drivers to look at. So, uh, so yeah, I'm excited about 1.36, and I know Utah will be available, they say, just in the next couple weeks. I haven't taken a look in my wish list page to see if it is actually for sale yet, or if they have a specific date. I know a couple days ago it was, it just said November, which is fine. I mean, November's not that long. We'll sort it out. Uh, can we get it in one swing? You know I always want to. No. No. Bit of a jackknife situation. We're not going to make it. Maybe, maybe. Maybe we are. Maybe we are. No way. Yeah, that's not pretty. Needs to be pretty. You know how OCD is got to be just so. Alright. Let's get this in here. About like so. And there we are. Right. Neutral. Set the brake. Engine off. And let's load up. So that is done, All right? Cargo's loaded, beautiful. Let's go here, and then let's go here. Uh, I don't see any drivers. Am I doing it wrong? I don't see any drivers at all. Hmm. Okay, unknown. We'll figure that out at a later date. So let's fire it up. Uh, 187 miles. That won't take long. Up in here. Put her in gear. Brake is off. And here we go. Now, I saw, when I fired the game up, I saw a couple mods, like seriously, two or three that had the red exclamation point, but none of them were really critical to the game. Just some lights and accessories and various other things. So I figured, why not? And... You know, it's not the... I like... In the past, I liked being a part of the beta program because it was just cool to have a game, you know, super early and not before other people. Obviously, the beta programs are open to anyone who wants to opt in. But it was cool to have, you know, it's just a... Uh, it's a novelty, you know. You know how people are. Shiny nickel. Anything that catches your eye. You know, you want to get all over it. Wow, it seems like there's more traffic. And, God, this game looks great now. It's, we're in a city, it's a small city, but we're in a city, 60 FPS, rock solid. I'm, I will continue to say I am impressed with how SCS is continuing to keep this game fresh, or trying to, anyway, they seem to be doing a good job of it. Um, I'm wondering now if we don't just want to go around the block. I suspect that when this light turns green, if we can't get out here quick enough, 
there's a gap. I was worried that another car was going to come down from the right and we would end up gridlocked. But we're okay. There they are. Yeah, the game looks really good. It really, really does. Wow, we're 80 FPS. Unheard of. That just doesn't happen. Not on my machine. So, uh, what the hell was I talking about? Something, something, 1.36. Yeah, I, it's always fun to have the newest one. It's always fun to have the, you know. But I had decided to opt out and wait for the full release. And then I saw those grain trailers and thought, eh, let's risk it. And the idea of starting another profile, I mean, it's not that big a deal to start a new save game. We just did it in ETS. It's not that big a deal. But I just didn't want to do it on, on both games, both sims at the same time. I don't know why. I, I don't know. It's just a video game. I don't necessarily, <laughs> you know... It's not that I don't put any thought into it, but sometimes you just, uh, you know... You just want to do it the way you want to do it, and there's really no reason for it. But it doesn't matter anyway, because it's just a game. Who cares? So, reset that. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this. And moment. Driving this truck, I don't know. I mean, the physics, it's got a slightly shorter wheelbase. Find a good gear. There we go. It's got a slightly shorter wheelbase, but I don't know, are the physics radically different? I don't know. It's got a different feel to it, and I know, I feel like every time I go to the gameplay options tab, they've added more stuff. Moment. Concentrating. They've added more stuff, and they've we've now got... Truck stability, trailer stability, and uh, suspension stiffness. And I feel like when you put all those together, you can end up with kind of a... I wouldn't say a bouncy truck, but it's definitely got a very uh, lively and kind of challenging feel to it. If that makes sense. All right. Golly. All right. Through here. Right. So now, what else is going on? Uh, nothing. Everything dropped. <laughs> Everything big dropped. There was a big update for Dirt Rally 2.0 that I saw, um, what else? There've been some minor patches for a set of course of competition, which is now 1.1 official. What else? I can't think of anything. Uh, I feel like the last week was kind of a big week and I don't know if that was everybody pushing, not, not this past week, but I mean the week before that. I don't know if that was developers pushing to have their stuff out and available and perhaps even sort of, uh, bug tested and hot fixed for November for shopping season uh, I know North America United States is always going to be a big market and because we do what is it like three quarters of consumer spending takes place in in uh, November December I don't know something some crazy statistic about how much money we spend around the holidays but you get what I'm saying um Speed limit is 75. We're going not quite 70. This truck feels uh, unsafe. I'll be real with you. Maybe that's why they banned them. <laughs> it feels really, really wobbly. All right. Let's hope for the best. So it could be that everybody was just pushing to have things out last week of October, and now that it's the first week of November, there's just less. I don't know. But there certainly seems to be less. So you know what? We got plenty to play with, though, from last week plenty to play with and um, now I saw uh, somebody sent me a link to the new Microsoft Flight Simulator Flight Sim 2020 there hasn't been a, 
a new one since 2006, I think. And even that one was just kind of a re-up of the one from 2000. So you could say that there has not been a new, a new, new flight simulator since, since 2000, so almost 20 years. And this new one is, it looks more like a professional training tool that they're going to try to sell to citizens. And I don't know if there will be a light version. I haven't seen pricing on it yet. If it's a, a professional training tool, then it would probably go as a service at a couple hundred bucks a month. You know, you would subscribe to it. If they want to sell it as a retail game, I would say maybe a max of 20 or 25 a month. Although DCS, uh, Digital Combat Simulator, comes with, it's free, comes with a couple of aircraft, but if, if you want to buy an aircraft, I, I want to say they're between 50 and about $80 a piece US. So that'll stack up pretty quick. The scenarios are, are kind of spendy. So I guess people do spend a lot of money on flight sims, perhaps, but I can't see spending, what would that be? 200 a month would be you know, 2,500 bucks a year. That's pretty steep for a citizen. So we'll see whether they break it out as a pro training tool for pilots or whether they break it out as a, as a retail game and perhaps they even split it and have a lighter version for retail we'll see but i'm definitely interested in it to the to the to the tune of considering building myself a flight sim chair i've got my eye on a hottest stick which is that type of flight sim probably half the aircraft fly on a yoke rather than a stick but you know a little bit of artistic license you can get by with a stick so I've thought about that, and the things that I've heard about, I mean, the whole thing will be cloud-based because the the terrain and textures is like petabytes of data. Uh, it's insane. They've modeled it down to, uh, well, they've modeled everything using Bing maps. Bing? What's Bing? Yeah. I don't know. Microsoft is kind of a powerhouse company. I don't know what's going on with Bing. They just can't seem to figure it out. It's been, what, like 10 years? Nobody uses Bing, and everybody hates it. But nevertheless, they're using Bing Maps for the map data. They're using uh, Azure technology for something. Oh, truck. Wow, this thing feels like a go-kart. Yeah. All right. Note to self. And uh, apparently it models like everything. It's got real-time weather for the entire planet and then Things like the way the trees are, are flapping and the way the little waves are moving would be dependent on the actual wind direction and wind speed in that part of the world at that moment. And I guess with it being that big, unless you've got a petabyte hard drive, it will simply load uh, adjoining tiles to the one that you're in. It will load adjoining tiles in real time as you're flying. Makes sense. I mean, it's the same thing we do now with truck sim. It loads tiles, but it loads them from a local, and they're much smaller. But it does not load the entire map simultaneously. It, it loads the tile that you're on and the tile that you're going to be on. Easy enough. But that level of detail... Now, uh, my dad's a pilot, and I know you really take notice of everything in the world. So, And he flies small aircraft. So you do take note of things like how the trees are moving. Right to give you an indication of which direction the wind is blowing and is it gusty or not. Uh, if you're coming in over water on your approach, you do take a notice of what the waves are doing, you know, things like that. You notice all those things. So for them to put it in the game makes perfect sense if, as it always has been, it's sort of a, sort of a training tool for students. But I feel like it's going to be at a level that it's never been at before for training. You know, it was always... You could use it for things like approaches and you know, seeing where, oh, okay, here's our exit already. Seeing where uh, various landmarks and various beacons, and I, I don't, off the top of my head, I cannot think of the name for it, but as you approach an airport, there's various uh, radio beacons that guide you into a specific pattern, put you in the right place so that everything is sort of, you know, everybody stays in their lane. And it was great for that. The, 
the older versions of Flight Sim were great for that. Even though they weren't super detailed, the graphics weren't, by comparison to today's games, graphics weren't very good. It would give you a, kind of a basic, you know, basic enough. But the more esoteric stuff, the minutia, it wasn't there. And it sounds like, in this version, all that stuff will be there. So I am looking forward to it. I don't know what kind of machine you're going to need to run it. And again, if there is kind of a dumbed-down consumer version, maybe you can get by with something other than a supercomputer. But very much interested in that. So as, as we move toward the new year, that may be a thing. And I definitely want to bring... I say this all the time, and I mean it. I definitely want to bring racing to the channel. Just trying to figure out how to do it. So I think that's... Yeah, that's all I got. Any other? No, not really. Not really. We're just going to sit in silence for the next 42 miles. There we go. And let's... Let's slow it down a little bit. As we come through the twisties. Yeah, man. This is a fun truck, though. And it's uh, it's definitely different. And I'm, I'm pleased that... Well, the game fired up no problem. I pulled out a few mods with red exclamation points, and I thought, well, when we fire up, we'll have a couple crashes. As you do. Not a big deal. No crashes there. And, uh, and even with some of the settings jacked, we're at, yeah, we're at 90 FPS right now. This is not, there's something wrong. Something's going on. This is not right. And that's with everything, everything on high and a few things on ultra, which is something that I do in this, in this sim in particular, ATS and ETS. That's something that I do because I can. Normally I start on like medium settings and then I bump things up to high gradually and see you know, what can I, what can I turn up and still keep a decent frame rate. That, that, okay, but not that. All right, what about these two together? You know, you experiment a little bit until you find that sweet spot between the, the appearance of your render and your frame rate. Well, with ATS and ETS, they're the only games where I can just jack everything and then go in and selectively turn things down until I find the sweet spot. But the sweet spot now seems to be, I'm, I'm curious if I can just go in and put everything on ultra. No, no way. That's not possible. That's not possible with my laptop. But I'm going to try it. Yeah, when we're done recording, I'm going to try it. I suppose, though, I should go to Las Vegas to do that. Because Las Vegas is the FPS killer in this game. But we'll see. I don't know. Well, yeah, man. I'm, I'm super excited. And now we're in Phoenix. And we have to make one more trip north. And that'll put us up near the Utah border. And, man, I'm so excited about that. I'm, I assume that they're going to have Highway 191. Highway 191 is a major north-south highway. It's not a freeway. It's not an interstate. But it's a major north-south highway. And it goes sort of, uh, I mean, it's just to the west of the Utah-Colorado line. And Moab is on 191. And I've spent a lot of time driving up and down 191, uh, going to and from various places when I lived in Moab. So we, when you live in, in a place like Moab, when you live in that part of the world, you're doing something every weekend. You're going paddling, you're going climbing, you're going even just camping. You just go hang out in the woods, sit by a campfire. You're always doing something. Uh, people that live in those types of places are extremely outdoorsy. So we were always doing something. And if you go north on 191, it's only, oh, probably 20 miles until you get to Interstate 76. And then that's the end of 191. But if you go south, it goes all the way down into Arizona. So 191 is kind of a special road for me. And I'm curious if it will be in the game. I'm also curious if Moab will be in the game. It's a tiny little town. I mean, when I lived there, it was just a few thousand people. I'm sure it's a few thousand more now. But it's still got to be less than, less than 6,000 people for a population. Tiny, tiny little town. Mountain bike town. Or it was, anyway. It's been sort of unexpected event, but I'm there, man. You can't give me an unexpected event as I'm making my turn. All right. Go back to the map. There we go. Uh, 
It says six miles. Oh dear. We're gonna have to check the map. Oh no. Oh no. Where's the where's the unexpected event? Find a good gear here. Set the brake. Let's look at the map here. So are we... Oh no. Are they going to send us all the way back around? They might. They might. Okay. So I guess we could go around this way. Let's see where the... Where the chaos is. Where the kerfuffle is. And figure out what we need to do to get where we're going. Okay. I ain't scared. So yeah, we'll get into Phoenix and then we'll head up north. We'll be, try to be just south of the Utah line when the DLC drops. So we can immediately head over the border. The border. It's like <laughs> the frontier. The state line. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean. Man, I'm glad we got to keep all of our... We, we're running... Uh, the real 3D company logos mod and we got to keep it and I'm really happy about that I think uh, is there a second turn yeah maybe it looks like we can't take the right up here we'll have to go around but then we can go down and make the following right or is that oh dear okay All right, so we've got a detour here. We've got a detour here. If we go down to that next one, I believe that's a freeway. Yeah, okay. That, okay. Well, we're just gonna have to, to sort it out here. Where are we at on time? 27 minutes, oh, this sucks. We would have been, we would have been timed perfectly to arrive at our destination in exactly 30 minutes. Now, is that all closed? Yeah, that's all closed. Okay. So we have to come at it from the other side. It's just a question of getting to the other side. Wow, there's... Traffic seems... The AI is better. Oh, okay. That's not bad. Ow. That's not bad at all. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Looks like we're still going to be on time. I thought we had to get on the interstate and drive all around and do this, that, and the other, and instead we just... Instead of making a right and a left, we're going to make a left and a right. Okay. Works for me. So yeah, we'll get teed up, and we'll be all ready, and uh, we'll head on up into Utah. Oh, it's a beautiful state. Colorado is... <sighs> This is, this is a tough one. It's a tricky one. California is where I live. It's where I want to live. It's not where I am right now, but it's where I, but it's, it's, it's where I want to live. But I, I don't use the word home because Colorado is home. Colorado is, I have to say, just mountains. And Den I lived in Denver. I lived in downtown Denver for a while. So there are cities there. But Denver is not like Los Angeles. Now, I don't necessarily want to live in Los Angeles, but I want to live in a state that has Los Angeles, if that makes sense. So the thing about California is it's got everything. It's got towering, snow-capped peaks. It's got the ocean. It's got desert, right? And it's got giant cities, and it's got, it's got everything. And it's a booming economy. I know, I know, there's a lot of rules and regulations. People say the taxes are too high. But there's a reason that everybody wants to go to California and start a business. Because that's where the money is. So, you know, I know Texas is good. I know there are other states that are really encouraging economic development. But it, it's, the, it's the, top of the top of the heap. If you want to make money in business, you go to California. Uh, it's not a hard and fast rule. I'm not like laying down the law. I'm just saying that's why everybody wants to live there. The weather's perfect. It's uh, it's just an amazing place. So that's where I want to live, and that's where I do live. But Colorado is home, and then right next to Colorado is Utah, and Colorado and Utah put together are two of the most beautiful states that I've ever been in. There, Colorado is 
I would say it's the most beautiful place I've ever been in in the world. There are places you see in Colorado, you you crest a hill, you crest a pass, driving, hiking, mountain biking, whatever. You crest a hill and you see the the land spilling out in front of you, and you just have to like stop and and gather yourself. It's really an extraordinary place. So, Utah, um, if you're traveling, if you're traveling west in Colorado, if you don't see the sign, because once you come down onto the western slope, which is the, as the, the Rocky Mountains go down to the desert on the west side, that's the western slope, it sort of turns into desert. Oh, I don't know. Somewhere around Aspen. I mean, by Grand Junction, you're definitely in the desert. Find a good gear here. By Grand Junction, you are in the desert. And then all the way into... I feel like it's done that twice now. We've got a, like a weird first gear. I'll figure it out. And the desert sort of continues all the way till you get uh, up into the Wasatch, uh, which is the, the next mountain range heading west. So there's really, to me, there's really, I wouldn't say there's no difference, but Colorado and Utah look, look so similar to me. And the time that I've spent there, and I lived in Grand Junction as well, so I lived out in the desert. And I've lived all over. It's, it's been interesting. It has really been an interesting life. But that part of the world, man, I'll tell you what. I used to live in Grand Junction and commute to Moab, right? After having lived in Moab, now I lived somewhere else and still commuted back there. And my commute was on the river road, which is, it's, it's too long to explain, but the, there's two ways to get from Grand Junction to Moab. One is I-76 to 191, and the other is to take the river road down along the Colorado River, which is essentially you're driving at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Now that part of the Colorado River Canyon in Utah it's not the Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon is down in Arizona. So it's not the Grand Canyon, but it's the, it's the still very much quite impressive canyon. But if you can imagine riding a motorcycle along a twisty, a twisty diabolical road at the bottom of the Grand Canyon next to the Colorado River, that was my commute. And that is, uh, that's living, man. This is where it ends. Right. Where's our... Ooh. All right. That's a tricky one. How are we doing on time? 33 minutes. I'm afraid we're going to have to skip this one. Yeah. Yep. Let's, uh, let's just wrap up. Because I don't want to do a 40-minute video for you. Grain delivered. We are on time. No damage. You can't really damage grain, though. If we're being real. Beautiful. And we're done. Folks, thanks for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of American Truck Simulator. And we'll see you next time. Take care now.